Hello guys, Toronto Brad here with another vlog update from the uh, streets of downtown Toronto. Tonight I'm here at uh, Young and Dundas, which is like the quote unquote Times Square of Toronto. And uh, back in the day, this was a place that I used to hang out with many, many years ago. There would be always some stuff going on and there'd be some type of uh, like a show or something like that. But these days, it's uh, Young and Dundas, probably not the spot in Toronto that you will hang out in. It's basically become a congregation point or a meeting point for all of the Punjabi student visa kids. And they love it here. They just stand here taking pictures and doing videos. And uh, this has now become their hangout. So it's not your hangout, it's their hangout. So all the Punjabi kids are here hanging out and enjoying the um, and Young and Dundas. You know, I usually like I stay, uh, I usually am up in North York. I come downtown maybe once a week I'll come downtown but these kids are here every night they're dancing and they're usually hanging out with the buskers and they're doing their little thing here and uh, not my thing really <clears throat> but I came through here just to see what's going on um, I'm usually in Chinatown or I'm at the lake or I'm at Union Station I'm usually not here but I like to just come here and just take a look at a place where I used to hang out with, with my friends many many years ago I used to hang out here Anyways, I just want to do a quick update on uh, what's going on with this Philippine situation. And I heard that Barry the Boss is in the, uh, the Philippines. I posted a picture from the Amex website a couple of days ago with some costing of the, the flights uh, to the Philippines from Toronto. And yeah, the flight cost has come down incredibly. And so, um, yeah, going out to the Philippines is not an issue. It's just I need time off work. I need to arrange everything. If I'm going to be gone for a month, it's a long time. So. I need to just get myself and my affairs in order before I, um, I head off to the Philippines. And um, yeah, everyone was uh, going on. They were saying, hey, Brad, Barry's in the Philippines and blah, blah, blah. And Barry's with some grannies. And you know what the funniest thing is? So here's a funny thing for you guys that are following my channel is that um, Barry the boss, um, Barry the boss was always very critical of my decision that when I'm traveling overseas, so when I went to Singapore and I went to Thailand, and then when I went to Philippines, you know, he's very critical of my choice of ladies that they're old. And, you know, I should be doing with a young lady, you know, and, you know, like I should go for eights, nines and tens. Like he calls it a dime piece. But here's the funny thing. All right. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick breakdown is that um, Barry, when he went to Philippines, apparently he's with some overweight MILF, overweight mom or granny. And he's trying to feed their kids at Jollibee. So, I mean, you know, for three years, you just berating me about the choice of uh, people that I choose to hang out with when I'm overseas and now look at you going to Philippines and doing everything that I do but even to a, like a worse degree not even getting a nice lady getting those overweight overweight ladies now anyways I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna be super critical or anything like that but that's just basically you know my opinion about what the situation is uh, with Barry the boss so you know he's always you know kind of harassing me about that and this and that and then look at he goes overseas he does the exact same thing so anyways man that's very the boss for you but anyways yeah the flights are way down now so it's cheap for me to get out there so hopefully in november i'll be back in the philippines um i don't know what i'm going to be doing but i'll probably be in ac I'm gonna hook up in manila stick uh, probably do a couple of nights at uh, makati diamond residences at greenbelt uh, i think it's greenbelt three and uh, this my, that's my stomping ground. I usually stay for there for a couple of days, I stay there. And then after that, I'll catch the bus at Kubao and I'll head up to um, Mabalakot. And then from Mabalakot over to, um, to AC, because uh, my, my lady is in Mabalakot. So you guys know Nita Channel. So I'll meet up with Nita Channel and I'll, I'll stay in Mabalakot. And then I'll go to AC. AC, I'll probably be not 100% sure, but probably sure I'll be at... Um, Scorebirds Hotel. So I'll likely be at the uh, Scorebirds Hotel and checking that out and seeing how that goes. And, uh, you know, it should be okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, I'd like to go back to Thailand. Obviously, I'd like to go back to Singapore. As soon as I have the capabilities to end the time, I will head back out to um, Singapore and to Thailand. And of course, I'd like to go to Vietnam. You know, I have a friend that's a follower of my channel. His name is Robert Mac in Asia, and he's a big promoter of the Vietnam travel genre. So obviously, yeah, I would love to get out to Vietnam and check it out and see what's going on there. I have some of my favorites in Vietnam, like the Trang, 
and uh, Da Nang. And you guys have seen, I've done some videos on Vietnam. I wanted to do a live stream on Vietnam, but you guys kind of hijacked it and brought it back to Philippines and Thailand. It's tough, man. When you when you bracket yourself in a genre and you try to branch out and you want to do something different, you know, you get kind of pigeonholed into that genre. But anyways, guys, um, you know, I, I still thank you guys for your support. I haven't been in the Philippines for a year and a half and you guys are still here giving me some big support and i do thank you guys for that obviously i'm working and it's not easy for me to just take time off and fly out but obviously if i could i would um and uh, when i can i will be doing some vlogging in the philippines vlogging all around manila ac kazon south triangle paranake you know mall of asia mandulong sm mall all of the all the hot spots in manila i'm gonna be vlogging it all up i'm gonna do as many vlogs as i can so that when i get back to um canada i can still have some good quality philippines content to upload for you guys and then you guys can enjoy and we can discuss different aspects of the philippines that might be interesting to somebody that's uh, going there for the first time but anyways i think that's about it that's all i've got time for just a little tired and i just wanted to put together a little video real quick for you guys that you guys could enjoy and i hope you guys like it so again this is dundas square and uh you know it's uh like toronto i told i was just on uh, ricky drama's channel so i don't know if you guys know ricky drama and i was just explaining to him that in toronto we do have a lot of these kids on the student visa here like a million of them every year now come in and it's just basically to feed our pension fund here for the um, elderly because we have to pay for these pensioners so very likely that many of them will not be able to stick around it's going to be a lottery for the permanent residency so for like a tech like a, the americans call it like a green card they're gonna have to get like a they're gonna have to win a lottery to get a ticket or they have to uh, pass their qualifications get a b-level job and then they have to stay at that B-level job for two or three years before they can get the permanent residency. So it's very difficult. It's not an easy game to play, but it's the game that we're playing because we want only the best in Canada. And even though Trudeau is flooding the country with, you know, millions of visa students and, uh, you know, whatever. This is how life is in the big city. And we're used to it. Toronto's always been a hub of the um, immigration into Canada. It's been the center point of immigration into Canada. And, uh, you know... So, uh, you know, I guess we just have to deal with it. I mean, it's all good. I don't even want to stick around here anyway. I'm going to be in the Philippines or Thailand. So in a way, I don't, I shouldn't really even care who's coming into Toronto. But um, yeah, this is Young Street. It's the famous street, longest street in uh, Canada. It's a very long street. It was once the longest street in the world, but then they changed the rules how they define a street. And so it's no longer. So if it, if it was by the old definition, I think the street is like 4,000 kilometers long. <laughs> but they said, no, 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 like about 400 miles or something. And like if the street breaks... So technically, it's not a continuous, therefore, not the same street. Therefore, you lose that title of the world's longest street. So um, that's kind of sad. But at the same time, I mean, honestly, just a little technicality. It is a long street. And this is a street that the subway runs under all the way through Toronto, all the way outside of Toronto. Soon they're going to extend it out of the Toronto all the way north into the northern suburbs. So very important street for transportation. It moves more people than basically any other street in the city, including, I'm not sure about the 401, maybe even the 401. 401 is moving how many cars in Toronto? I think about half a million cars. So maybe the 401 is transporting more, but it is one of the important roads. Like these roads are transporting hundreds of thousands of people a day. I know the 401 is transporting like a half a million in Toronto a day, something like that. I think Young Street does the same, but underground. And then Union Station is a massive train hub, which also has about half a million, 500,000 or 400,000 people a day going through Union Station. So these are massive transportation hubs. And it's like New York level, New York levels of uh, traffic that are going through these uh, transportation nodes. But um, yeah, this is Young Street and you can see it's it's fully walled in in skyscrapers and massive buildings. And so it's like basically a canyon street. And it has that little opening there at the Eden Center where those guys were dancing. But most of the street is like this, just continuous wall of skyscrapers and condos and retail complexes. And and uh, it's like really active street. So anyways, guys, um, this is Toronto Brad doing a little vlog for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. And um, I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, welcome to Toronto. Take care, guys.